Hey, it's me again. It's Jewel. And today I am going to talk about my backpack. There's a lot to go over with this thing. Um, I'm going to just set it right here while I'm talking and I'll get there. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that I don't recommend making a backpack until you have gear. The first thing you should do is get your gear together. Why? Because you don't know what size backpack to make for yourself until you know what it is that you're going to be putting in said backpack. If you're trying to save weight, congrats. Great idea. Save weight. Um, you're not going to do that until you've actually gotten your base weight down to what, you know, the range that you want it to be in. Personally, my, my base weight, the, the, all of the gear combined, food and water, is usually not more than 20 pounds for me. So it was pretty easy for me to come up with a, an idea of how big uh, I wanted my backpack to be. And the first thing you should definitely do is go through all the websites and all the gear that you can find. Uh, Garage Grown Gear is good. Uh, you can go to the Waymark website. Waymark is, uh, they've got some really good packs going over there. I looked at Gossamer Gear. I've looked at uh, the, the old Rayway backpacks. I've looked at, I've gone through everything that I could finally, you know, that I could possibly find online. And I finally came up with what it was that I wanted before I started this project. So with that being said, this is what I did and definitely not what you need to do to make your dream backpack. And, you know, I, I, I really highly recommend making sure you have a good handle on how much gear you plan on putting in it. It would be a real shame to make a backpack that was bigger than you needed, like by a lot, or smaller than you needed. Everybody's got different gear, everybody's got different preferences, so know yours before you begin. Okay. This backpack that I've made is, the only thing that's in here right now is actually my sleeping bag, and I'm gonna take it out, but I just wanted to put something in there so that I could kind of show you, uh, you know, with something in it, kind of what it looks like. And fully loaded, I at the end of this video, I will pause and I will go and load it up real quick and I'll show you what it looks like when it's fully loaded. So the first thing that you'll notice is that I used, obviously, a printed material to make this backpack. And I used printed material on the sides, and all, as well as on the bottom. The reason that I used the printed material is because one, I wanted it to match all of my other stuff because I thought that would be cool, and it is, it's really awesome. And two, because I didn't want it to be like something everyone else has. The benefit of making your own gear is a, the ability to do whatever the heck you want to do with it. So that's why I did it. Um, the second thing is that you really need to take into consideration how much stuff you want to put outside of your pack. In other words, in the pockets of your pack versus inside of your pack. Yes, it's a great idea to come up with a basic leader idea, you know, basic general idea of how big it's going to be. But when you start sewing and you start really actually making this this thing, putting this thing together, you're going to notice that maybe your calculations of what the actual space inside of it might be a little bit different than what you end up with. You have seam allowances, you have like, you know, so the shape and the size and the diameter and how, how you stack your gear inside there may or may not work for, for what, you know, you've designed. In my case, I designed intentionally the width of the backpack. So the area from, Nova, my cat is so terrible. So this area from here to here is the width of the backpack. These are the sides. Okay, so this is the width here. And I intentionally made the width of my backpack to be equal to what my tent ends up being when it's actually, uh, you know, folded up inside of its stuff sack. Um, I just basically stuffed it inside the stuff sack that I always use for it. And then I measured the length of it. And that's how I determined how wide I wanted it to be. If you go too wide, you also want to take it into consideration. Here's the width of my body and the width of the pack. You know, so it actually does fit the width of my body. It's not wider than me, okay, when I'm walking around and stuff. But with the pockets on the side, the pocket over here for the water bottle, um, I do end up with 
a little bit more space down here in the bottom part, uh, but it definitely is comfortable. So that water bottle pocket sits right here so I can reach back and easily just grab my water. And I want you to think about before you start designing a pack, how much water you need, where you're gonna be carrying it and what's comfortable for you. Some people like to put their water bottle on their shoulder. I don't, I, I hate having stuff on my chest because when I'm walking around, I, it just jiggles. And yes, you could attach it with more than one point and I just don't like it personally and it's up to you if you wanna do that, you're more than welcome to do your thing. You do you boo. But for me, I wanted it in the back and so I made my water bottle pocket here so that it would fit on my right side where my right hand goes down and I pull that out because I'm notoriously bad about just drinking water the whole the whole hike ask my husband he's like why do you have to stop for water so much I'm like the dehydration but <laughs> um uh yeah so I wanted easy access to my water uh, but I don't want it on my chest so that was where I ended up putting that pocket the other thing that I did was this side pocket was going to be long. I, I knew that I wanted a really long pocket. And the reason that I made, it goes all the way from the top of basically like if this is rolled down, we'll just roll this down real quick. We'll roll it down. The pocket itself is just below. If it's at its, at its smallest crammed, you know, so all the way down, it's just below that. Um, and the, this is a really thin pocket that goes all the way down to the bottom of the bag. And when I was deciding how much fabric to use to make this pocket, I actually went and took my, um, my cook kit and I wrapped the fabric around my cook kit and then I added a couple extra inches so that when I sewed it all together, my cook kit will just slide down in there. And that was how big I wanted it to be. The other thing is when I put my down jacket in there, I could stuff it all the way down inside of there if I wanted to, and I'd have easy access, or my, you know, my, uh, my hoodie can get stuffed into that side pocket. Uh, but the number one thing that I do with it is actually put my trekking pole in there. I have a, a tent, a one person tent, and I only use one trekking pole. Um, some people need two, I only take one. I just need something to poke at snakes with or whatever. So I don't like it when the pole is attached to the outside of the pack. I um, personally have flown a lot. And uh, for me, the idea of having anything hanging off of my backpack is not something I'm into. I know a lot of people want to hang things. I just don't. Um, so I put two, I just have two loops, one on either side of the pack. Uh, to attach two attachment points and they're you know toward the, the top of the pack so if I wanted to clip, clip a beaner on here I think actually I have I have a beaner on here um, so I can just kind of show you yeah it's just it's really easy for me if I was like wanting to hang up my socks or hang up my clothes or whatever I can just hang them right on the top part so that it hangs down but it doesn't hang down all the way like to the ground. It just would sit on the outside of my pack. And for me, that was enough. Two attachment points, I didn't need any more than that. Um, other people like to go and put like a whole bunch of loops um, up and down their pack. Uh, like, so like a crisscross design. I know, I know you know what I'm talking about, where you take a bungee, a bungee strap and you go like across this way or like across there so that you can hang. But I don't, like, I've always found that I don't use that. I, I feel really uncomfortable putting anything on the back of my pack where I can't see it. Um, so I'm never gonna use that because just, I don't want to. If it's your thing, go for it. Um, when you make this pack, you're just gonna wanna design it so that you make sure that this seam, you sew your loops into. Like I've sewn this this loop right here. It's kind of hard to see it because I've used the, um, the same webbing this is the coloring book webbing from Ripstop by the Roll. Um, and I use that to finish that seam on the top and make it easy to open. Easy to open the bag. And I can obviously see where, you know, where I'm working with there. Um, but yeah, so to do the top of the bag was pretty simple. I also used the coloring book pattern to make my side straps here, which have the loopies. 
so I can put things in them if I choose to, like my my beaner with my knife and my Aleve, because I'm old and I like Aleve, and my hand sanitizer, just, they just kind of live there, like I honestly just don't ever take them off there, it's just their home now. Welcome to your new home. But, um, but yeah, so this, let me take my sleeping bag out. I don't need that. It'll make it easier for me to maneuver this thing too. So the bottom panel, I'm gonna start with the bottom panel here. This is a colored printed Hyper D 300 material, which also happens to be the same material that I made my sleeping bag stuff sack out of. So I got this and that are actually one yard. It's all one yard. Um, I was worried about this when I did it, and I, I would recommend that anybody who's trying to make their own backpack consider that this part of the backpack is going to sit on the ground a lot. In other words, you're going to be chunking that backpack all over the place, and probably what's going to happen is that this part is going to be the first part to wear out. So if I was going to make any part of this backpack with a thicker material, it would definitely be the bottom of the pack. Um, believe it or not, the back does not get as much wear and tear in my experience, and... <clears throat> and you can see here that I just used the same Hyper D. This is the same Hyper D material, but in black. Who's just a slight black? Boring. Um, and then I used to reinforce my straps, I used. Um, and this is, so this is how I attach my straps on and made them like really sturdy so I can pull really hard on them and they won't break. Um, the straps themselves, the material is, uh, this is a quarter um, mesh, a quarter inch mesh. They have eighth of an inch mesh and they have quarter of an inch mesh. And I chose to go with the thicker mesh and I could have hypothetically put, um, Inside of here, I could have actually added more padding if I wanted to, but because this backpack is only ever going to be used for 20 pounds, um, if it was anything over that, I would recommend putting a sheet of um, uh, foam inside before you sew it. Uh, but otherwise, I would say that this is Hyper D 300 on the outside, and then this is the quarter mesh. And I kind of wish I could show you. And this is the part of the backpack that I really felt was the most important part because when you're making your backpack, this sits on your shoulders and rubs on your shoulders a lot. And the comfort of your backpack is really gonna depend on how you decide to make those straps. Um, so the dimensions of this thing, when it was all said and done, um, I also put on the inside, you see I used another. I basically doubled up. I put one of the uh, nylon webbing on the inside and then one of the nylon webbing on the outside and I sewed the two the two pieces together to hold my straps so they are ridiculously sturdy in other words um, and I also attached a handle so I have a way to, to hang it up I don't want to hang it up um, yeah so the only the only thing that you really need to consider is that when you're doing your pockets you're going to cut the bottom panel to the size that you want it to be. You're going to cut your side panels. You need two side panels. You want to obviously you want to make them the same size. Uh, so this material here is the side panel. And here's the other side panel. It has an actual mesh on it. Um, but you can see underneath here is the the actual pattern material underneath there. Um, yeah, let's see what else. And then you need your back, your back panel, and your front panel. So how many pieces do we have here? Well, you've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then your straps. So it's really only 
really it's only five pieces of material. I know it looks like a lot. It's a little overwhelming. And for me, it was when, well, I guess, and then you have your, your pocket. I, I used a regular uh, Hyper D 300 for the pocket. So that was one separate piece that I had to cut. Um, yeah, there are a ton of tutorials on how to make a backpack. Uh, but a couple of the things that were actually pretty difficult for me when I was trying to figure out how to put this thing together uh, was this part here. This is where the actual straps, so these are adjustable, and then these are the dragon locks from Ripstop by the Roll. And on the end of it, I just folded it over and sewed it so that when you go and pull on it as hard as you can, it won't come undone. But this side here... I took the Hyper D 300 and I had to make this little piece. Um, I wish I could get back. I wish I could get in there better so you can see it. That little piece right there doesn't seem like it would be all that difficult to make, but the angle of it was actually kind of difficult to calculate. I took what I did was I took a, a triangle and then I cut it down and then I tried to and then I cut it down again and then. So it took me a little bit of material to figure out exactly what size I wanted this to be so that the angle was such that when this strap comes up and over the chest, it actually sits comfortably on my side where it's supposed to instead of um, going everywhere. And you really do need to have something to reinforce the strap itself because this part of the pack does get a lot of wear. So on the inside, when I sewed it together, I actually, that was one of the first things that I did was figure out how I wanted to, to attach those bottom straps. I'm just going to take this thing and I'm going to just turn it inside out real quick so you can see. Because when you're sewing, you're clearly not going to be sewing on the outside. You're going to be sewing on the inside. <coughs> so... Fortunately, you can see you actually, you don't even really see, you know, where that, um, <clears throat> where that little guy is attached because after I was done, I went through and I seam sealed it. Um, and I just wanted to kind of, I'm just kind of take part of the seam and show you. The Hyper D 300 has a PU finish on it, a polyurethane finish on it. And so you can't use like a sill. A silicone sealant on it you need to get actual tape well at least I did like the, the tape was necessary <clears throat> and I don't know you can't even really see it it kind of vanishes but it's just this clear plastic tape and then what I did was I just laid it out on my um, my ironing board with a towel and I just took my iron and I just carefully went up the seam and warmed it and warmed it until it um, until it looked like it was good and sealed. <clears throat> and that, that covered up all of the seams. I went through and I did that on the whole pack all the way, all the way around on each one of the seams that are there. So the inside of the pack is actually water. I wouldn't say that it's waterproof, but I would definitely say that it's like highly water resistant. Like if I took this and I soaked it in water, like dunked it in water, it probably would be. Um, but if it's raining and the pack gets some water on it, it's not going to leak. Um, so that cuts down for me. It's like one less thing. When I was using, when I was using a liner, uh, a lot of people just use like a trash bag or, you know, <clears throat> or put a pack liner in there to keep everything dry. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I think you can do it, and I think that you can use any pack you want to. You don't have to worry about the waterproofness of it if you do that. Um, but I seem to be going through a lot of liners, and not that it's hard to find a trash bag or anything, but, like, they rip really fast on me. So I kind of just wanted to make a pack that I didn't really have to worry about it so much that I could just, like, you know, have it sealed, and, and for the most part, it's not going to get water in it. Um, and then... Everything that I have that is actually like survival has to stay dry, cannot get wet under any circumstances, goes in this bag anyway. So this is, you know, my sleep set and my, um, my sleeping bag. So there's really no reason for me to have all that crinkly plastic that I'm carrying around with me all the time. Um, if I don't need it, I don't need it, right? 
but I probably wouldn't want to go swimming with this thing. If I could avoid it, it would be better, you know. That would be better. But yeah, so my water bottle pocket and then <clears throat> long pocket on the side was what I chose to do. And the front pocket, you can see, is actually really big. The front, the front pocket on this thing is like arm's length. Um, <clears throat> believe it or not, I didn't actually know what to do uh, for this top part when I made the pack. I had no idea what I was doing. I just kind of sewed a channel and uh, like I, I sewed a seam like just and I knew I like I kind of left it a wide seam I would say like it's about almost an inch maybe three quarters of an inch um, and then I was like okay so but how do I get it to have stretchiness so that it doesn't like because you don't you don't want things to fall out of it <coughs> so I kind of wanted this to be, it was sticking out a little bit more, and I wanted this to be like, you know, when it was full, I kind of wanted it to lay flat. Um, <laughs> so I took a bra, one of my old bra straps, <laughs> my elastic bra straps from one that I was never going to wear again, and I just recycled it, and I just took the, you know, the elastic part, <laughs> and it did the trick. So, and it matched, because it's pink. <laughs> yeah, nobody else is going to have this. Nobody else will ever have my gear, right? So, um, the thing about it is that it costs me... I'm going to talk about price, materials, and all that real quick. Really cool backpack. Really proud of my work. But, before you start... You know, before you embark on your mission to make your own backpack, I think it's pretty important to try and figure out what your budget is. And, for me, it was, like, any amount of money. I didn't care. It it's a hobby for me. I, I was just having fun with it and I didn't really care how much it cost to make it. And I had to get a little bit creative with the materials at some point because, um, I was going to use a different mesh. Um, this is the, the mesh that they have on ripstop by the roll and it's kind of like it's smooth, but I really wanted an elastic and this is not elastic. It has almost zero, like it stretches one way, but not the other way, but it's very little stretch. And I kind of told myself, like, you know how the Waymark packs have, like, the, the stretchy materials, like, elasticy material? That's what I had in mind, but I, I actually like this better because it's more breathable, believe it or not. If I throw something wet in there, like my socks or whatever, I could hike around all day long, and I can just move them from time to time so that they get air, but they will dry out eventually. Um, <clears throat> so I made do with what I had. And I think that it's really important if you're trying to make your own gear that you have some level of flexibility about it. And don't don't be like, I gotta, I gotta do this exact thing that somebody else did. You, you, you don't, you have some actual, like there's some room, some wiggle room when you're making your own gear. Um, and you can get a little bit more creative with it. You're not, if you're not trying to sell it, it's just for you and you're gonna go and test it out in the field and see how you like it and whether or not you wanna keep using it have fun with it that's the whole point is to have fun with it like otherwise why would you even make your own stuff you know so i haven't actually had any problems with it it actually is working really well and uh do i wish they had a stretch mesh sure but the stuff that they did have was perfectly acceptable and definitely works um and that long pocket is made out of the same material so i really didn't need all that much i think i used i ordered like half a yard just half a yard and it wasn't even super expensive um they had a sale when I was buying the mesh for the, you know, the the air mesh, if you will, for the, the straps. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was like, I think it was like $15 for the straps to make the straps. And you can see these guys just, it's not full right now, but what I did to make them was I just kind of, I took a backpack that I had that like, I kind of liked the way that it sat on my shoulders um it, it came down and then it veered out in the right spot like where I wanted it to and I didn't want a hip belt a lot of people are like oh you should make a, a backpack with a hip belt I, I don't like them because my hips are weird like I'm a girl but like and I know probably if you're a female you can relate like we have weird hips okay we don't have the same dimensions as dudes and so if i have a hip belt i have to have a padded hip belt because otherwise my hip bones are going to rub into it and it's going to give me like you know um bruises and blisters on my on my hips and so I, at one point i was just like you know what i don't even want a hip belt 
I just, I don't even want to hit belt. And I couldn't be happier with my choice to go without. So, um, you know, all the things that you see on your traditional backpacks and the you actually can get away with making a really lightweight backpack uh, for a really affordable price. And probably it's going to hold all of your gear and do exactly what you needed to do, probably. That's what happened to me. Um, yeah, I kept thinking I was going to make a hip belt. In fact, I bought enough material of the, the, the quarter inch mesh that I could have made a hip belt for it. And when I was all done with it, I didn't even want one. Like it just, this felt, this felt right without it. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, uh, the other thing that you want to take into consideration is the top of your backpack. If you're going to do a roll top closure on the top, of course there's different ways to do it, but if you choose to do a roll top closure, um, you definitely want to make sure that your, your opening, this part here, has some flexibility to it and your little clippies. Um, you know, it's, it's better to have this be like a larger opening on the top. Um, and then also the amount of food that you carry is going to be unique to you. If you're the type of person who does three days, five days, seven days, um, <clears throat> obviously the more days that you go backpacking in a row, the bigger your backpack is going to have to be. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. You can try and width it and make it wider so that, you know, it holds more, um, width wise, or you can try and make it longer so that it comes up higher. It's rides higher and you, you can put your food in it. Um, what I decided to do is I decided to make a backpack that was big enough for me to put all of my gear in plus two to three days worth of food comfortably and still be able to roll that top and uh, roll it. <clears throat> I can still roll this down a couple times and clip it and that ended up being the amount of space that I needed for all of my gear. My gear goes up to about there and then this top part all ends up being food. And I, I haven't even, honestly, I haven't even taken it out for seven days straight, but if I did, I already know how I would do it. It's really simple. Um, you put all your gear in the pack, you roll it down, and then you attach your food bag on top or your bear canister. If you need to have a bear canister, I mean, it's another way to do it, but Remember the flexibility factor when you're designing your backpack and just try to make it something that's going to work for what you do typically. And um, if you need to have more than one backpack, so be it. You can make another one. If you don't like the one you made, make another one, you know. Um, but I highly recommend doing something that is going to be unique to you, that's your personal gear that makes you feel like I wouldn't say proud, but like makes you feel comfortable and confident in what you're carrying and your gear should be something that you like. If you really like orange, like don't make a green backpack, <laughs> you know, go with what you know, go with what makes you comfortable and you probably won't be able to go wrong with it. So, so yeah, for me, it was like Hyper D 300. All of the material in the backpack was Hyper D 300, um, quarter inch mesh for the, for the, um, shoulder straps and the mesh for the panels and those are the only three materials that I really even needed. I also got coloring book um, webbing and I think I use probably like I, I want to say it comes in like 15 foot lengths or like the yards it, it comes in like a bulk of, of webbing and I used about half of it on my backpack and then um, I used some of it on my on my sleeping bag bag um but it was more than enough to do multiple projects with so if you're worried about it and you're like oh i want to get custom stuff go for it and um uh yeah that's it i mean i didn't even order any other color of webbing i just got the one roll of coloring book printed webbing and i did all of my gear with it so um including the roll top for the backpack so the and the straps the shoulder straps the roll top all of it and uh total cost i think we were looking at i want to say i think my rough stop by the roll order total was about fifty dollars i mean i want to say about a hundred dollars total for all of my gear it cost me a hundred dollars except for the sleeping bag down because that I wasn't able to source it 
they do have it, but it was very expensive and I already had some down that I wanted to use that I wanted to recycle. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I was able to make all of my gear for about a hundred bucks. Hold it. Uh, except for the sleeping bag down, which was a hundred dollars in and of itself. Um, but yeah, so that's not actually a whole lot of money. It was mostly just time and learning how to do, you know, it was all straight stitch. Um, I think that I did use a zigzag at one point. Yeah, I did. Uh, I used a zigzag when I was doing one of these straps. Um, even even on the straps on the front when I was doing the uh, the loops, I gave myself a little extra room to like clip things on. I even did those with a straight stitch, no problem. I just went back and forth five times, six times, something like that, uh, until it felt right and it it's holding really well um but <clears throat> there was something that i used a zigzag stitch for but i don't think it was even necessary i think you could have gotten by with a straight stitch uh the other thing is these buckles i don't like these buckles and if i had to do it again this is the one thing i would change i would put uh, a thicker material on the bottom but for the buckles i would use a lighter buckle um the the three-quarter Oh, this is, I'm sorry, one inch. This is one inch um, <clears throat> webbing, one inch nylon webbing. So I had to get a one inch buckle, um, but this thing is actually like really chunky. It works. I don't have any worries that it's gonna break or anything like that, but for an ultralight backpack, it doesn't feel high tech enough for me. I just, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just probably would have used different buckles, that's all. Everything else I was perfectly happy with. Um, even the seam sealant that I used, and yeah, everything was good. In retrospect, I just changed the buckles. Alright, that's it. This is now a 30-minute video. <laughs> Bye, guys.